last lab, we examined the external anatomy of a frog and the structures inside the frog's mouth. In this lab, we will continue our dissection of the frog so we can take a close look at its internal anatomy. To expose the internal organs of the digestive, circulatory, respiratory, and excretory systems, we first need to cut away some of the skin and muscle tissue covering the frog's body cavity. Notice that the frog's skin is loose and baggy, so we can grab the skin and pull it up to make our first incision without damaging tissue underneath the skin. We want to make a medial incision on the frog's ventral side, so our first cut will be a short snip in this area between its hind legs. As we use the sharp scissors to make the medial incision, we must pull up with the scissors so we do not cut the tissues beneath the skin. We will make a long medial incision from the first cut, almost to the mouth. And all the way down to the posterior end of the frog's body. Next, we need to make two transverse incisions. The first cut is across the ventral surface, just posterior to the forelegs. and the second cut is just anterior to the hind legs. After making our incisions, we need to pull up the skin to loosen some of the tissue that connects the skin to the muscles. This connective tissue is called mesentery. Some of the mesentery easily comes loose, but some needs to be cut loose with a scalpel. Then, we need to use T-pins to secure the skin to the dissecting pad. Then, we repeat the procedure on the other side. With the skin pulled back, we can clearly see the muscle layer covering the frog's body cavity. These are skeletal muscles, which are sometimes called voluntary muscles. The frog's skeletal muscles are similar to our skeletal muscles in function, but the size and arrangement of its muscles are different. We use the scissors to make a lateral incision through the muscles. We must be especially careful not to damage underlying organs. The muscles are loosely attached to the organs below with mesentery tissue. With our blunt probe, we can loosen the mesentery to separate the muscles from the organs. We repeat the process on the other side of the body. We will make an anterior transverse incision along the same path we followed earlier when we cut the skin. Muscle tissue is tougher than skin, so it will be harder to cut. Near the axis, the incision will become more difficult because we will also be cutting through the frog's sternum. The sternum is the flat bone that protects the heart and provides a place for the muscles to attach. Now we will make a posterior transverse incision along the same path we followed when we cut the skin. It may be necessary to cut some of the mesentery with the scalpel or scissors. Once the muscles are cut away, we can lift them off and set them aside. It is important that we remove all of the muscles that might interfere with our ability to see the frog's internal organs. We should be able to see many of the internal organs now. One of the most prominent internal organs of the frog is its liver, which is this large, flat, brown organ. Notice that the frog's liver has three parts called lobes. The right lobe, 
the left posterior lobe, and the left anterior lobe, which is sometimes called the median lobe. The frog's liver, like our liver, produces many hormones and enzymes, including bile, which is necessary for digestion. If we lift up the right anterior lobe of the liver, we can see a small green sac. This is the gallbladder. The gallbladder stores bile and then releases it into the small intestine as the frog needs it for digestion. Now, we will trace the path of the frog's digestive system. In our previous lab, we looked at the mouth, which is the organ at the beginning of the digestive system. The frog uses its sticky tongue to snatch its prey and pull it into its mouth. In the mouth, food is mixed with saliva to begin chemical digestion. Food passes from the mouth into the esophagus. To see the esophagus, we need to cut away some more muscle tissue. We will start at the anterior transverse incision and make a medial incision along the axis up toward the mouth. When we make this incision, we will be cutting through more of the frog's sternum. At this point, we need to pin down the forelegs to keep them out of the way and open up the body cavity so we can better see the internal organs. The esophagus connects to the stomach, which is partially hidden by the liver. If we pull up the left lobes of the liver and move the stomach, we can see where the esophagus connects to the stomach. From the esophagus, food passes into the stomach, where the food is mixed with digestive enzymes to continue chemical digestion. We can clearly see some of the mesentery that holds the stomach in place. At the base of the stomach, we can feel a hard knot. This is the pyloric sphincter, which is a muscular valve that closes off the end of the stomach. After food is partially digested by the stomach, it passes through the pyloric sphincter into the small intestine. Digestion continues in the small intestine. Digested nutrients pass through the walls of the small intestine into the blood vessels lining the mesentery. Undigested food passes into the large intestine as waste. Notice that the large intestine is not as long as the small intestine, but it has a larger diameter. Waste from the large intestine is excreted through the cloaca, which is the opening at the end of the digestive system. In this lab, we examined the frog's digestive system. In our next lab, we will take a closer look at the frog's respiratory, circulatory, and excretory systems. At this time, proceed with the corresponding activities.